Your Majesty, King Abdullah II, Ibn al Hussein of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, Your Majesty, Queen Rania al Abdullah, Your Royal Highness, Crown Prince Hussein al Abdullah, Your Excellencies, Royal Highnesses, esteemed heads of states, heads of government, and members of government. And here I would like to welcome particularly President Al Sisi and President Abbas. <clears throat> Dear co chairs of this summit, Dear friends of the World Economic Forum, welcome to the 18th World Economic Forum on the Middle East and North Africa, and the 9th, which is taking place here at the shores of the Dead Sea, thanks to the great hospitality of His Majesty, the Government of Jordan, and the people of Jordan. The World Economic Forum has been engaged in this reason, region since the early 1970s. And I'm so proud to see so many partners, members, and friends here in this hall. Today, our role as a platform for dialogue and as a catalyst for economic development and social progress is even more critical given the political and social forces which are reshaping the region. We are deeply saddened by what is happening in Syria, Yemen, Libya and Iraq. And in this context, I would like to particularly welcome the delegates from those troubled countries and assure them of our full support. Ladies and gentlemen, the rise of violent extremism is not just a deep regional concern. It is a challenge for all of us in politics, business, and civil society. It is a cancer which, if not stamped out, is spreading globally. In view of the importance of this issue, we have given it prominent space in our program. But this meeting should not be dominated by a bleak picture. It should focus on the opportunities of the region if the right transformation and reform processes are courageously undertaken. Nowhere it is more fitting to address those transformation processes than in Jordan, a country which has shown such remarkable resilience, a country which deserves our admiration for fostering dialogue and cooperation while being steadfast in its push against terrorism. The world owes you, Your Majesty, deep respect for your leadership and for the tremendous burden you are shouldering by hosting over two million refugees. Also, the reform momentum in our host country is so impressive. What we are seeing now is a return to solid growth and improvements in national competitiveness. Given the external environment, these are remarkable successes. I know that our Jordanian friends will hold a special session entitled Jordan Relaunched, which underscores the current momentum and opportunities in front of us. The fact that more than 1,000 delegates from 60 different countries are here in this hall 
demonstrates the confidence in the future of this region and dwarfs pessimism. But in addition to the deeds, it is the spirit of this country which captivates our minds while advocating for a firm response to the threat of violent extremism, His Majesty stands for providing a comprehensive, galvanizing, forward-looking vision for how more collaboration and joint action can not only help to overcome the current threat, but also help to surface a new future for the region and the world. Ladies and gentlemen, this year in Davos, the World Economic Forum was officially recognized as an international institution for public-private cooperation, which further deepens our commitment and capabilities in driving partnerships for, for prosperity and peace. Ranging from infrastructure to employment and the future of the Internet, we will showcase over the coming two days concrete opportunities, opportunities for implementation for action, where the Forum's business community can engage together with policymakers around the key challenges of the region. It is now my great honor to welcome to the podium His Majesty King Abdullah II, Ibn al Hussein of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, to officially welcome you and open the 2015 World Economic Forum on the Middle East and North Africa. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Professor Schwab, my friend, welcome back to Jordan. Your presence is always an honor and we are delighted uh, that you have uh, come back here to the Dead Sea once again. I would also like to welcome President Al-Sisi, President Abbas, President Yaga, as well as uh, President Barazani uh, and President, uh, Vice President Alawi, our dear friends, uh, we always feel uh, delighted when you come back to your country. Uh, we always believe that this is your home and we're delighted uh, that you are with us here uh, today. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to all of you. I am delighted to see so many former participants and so many new faces, especially the young men and women amongst us. The World Economic Forum meets here at the Dead Sea for the ninth time. The first of these meetings was an innovation. Twelve years later, what was once a startup is now a growth leader. Partnerships born here have scaled up. Your presence today is a reinvestment in a future of opportunity. This is more than the story of our forum. It is the story of our region, and we are all aware of the crisis in the news. But there is another deeper reality that you as economic and national leaders know. Throughout the Middle East and North Africa, more than 350 million people are striving, economies are growing, youth are achieving, and obstacles are being tackled. And as this happens, new possibilities, new human potential, new assets are being uncovered. This forum is about grasping these opportunities in building a future for this region by creating a framework for prosperity and peace. And my friends, it is time for a new push engaging all sectors to create inclusive growth. 
This is Jordan's goal, relaunching growth and investment while deepening reform and inclusion. For this end, public-private partnerships are our building blocks. Now, our 10-year economic blueprint, Jordan's 2025, will enable us to move fast, to diversify resources, to develop infrastructure, and capitalize on strengths. This plan will be delivered through public and private partnerships, and to a large extent, through projects of over $18 billion to be announced today. Now, most of these projects are made through public-private partnerships. Some are funded by the government. And here, I would like to thank Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, and the UAE for their support. In many of the developed projects in the kingdom through the GCC fund over the past few years. Jordan is committed to a prosperous future, and measures are being strengthened to support startups, business expansion, and market-ready skills. You know, the business incubators, development zones, and new partnerships are supporting industry, innovation, and most important, the source of job growth, entrepreneurship, and the private sector. Jordan's growth is rising again. Higher, steady growth is forecast. The outlook is backed by prudent national economic management, and we are pleased to see the budget deficit down by 15 percent and foreign reserves up to the highest level in Jordan's history. And despite all the challenges that surround us, Jordan has been able to grow at more than 3 percent last year and is expected to grow at close to 4 percent over this year. This is more than a track record of surmounting challenges. It is a sign of ongoing strengths. This is also the message of our ongoing reform process. Now, we view this process as a continuous path forward. This year, our parliament is looking at new municipal elections, decentralization, and party laws. And the government will be introducing a new elections law. So my friends, Jordan may be small, but it is rich in terms of its strategic assets. Re-envisioning these assets is vital for our growth. Jordan is a gateway for regional and world trade and businesses. We know we have to be ahead of the curve to manage the challenges that we face. And for this, we constantly seek to extend what such a gateway could provide Jordanians as well as their partners. Not only access to billions of consumers through multiple FTAs, but diversifying exports and partners. Not only active connections to global supply chains, but international networks that facilitate small and medium-sized enterprises through financing partnerships and new markets. Today, Jordan's gateway has become a conduit for innovation. 75% of Arab content of the internet flows from Jordan's tech sector. ICT exports have flourished. Once small companies have scaled up, taken global positions, and spun off new enterprises. These achievements are to the credit of a young bilingual and globally aware workforce. And they, too, are a gateway to a future without limit. We also need to find the opportunities and challenge. To define our region by problems and not solutions is to miss a huge potential. Rapid urbanization, education requirements, water scarcity, the need for reliable energy, building health and transport infrastructure. These are critical issues for most of our countries. But in all these areas, new approaches and innovation or innovative products and services 
offer unprecedented scope to those who look ahead. In Jordan, we are looking to new projects in urban development, water infrastructure, and a diversified long-term energy platform. Public-private partnerships are key in bringing all these projects to fruition. Today, Jordan is bringing solar heating and lighting to our schools and offices, electric vehicles to our streets and industries, a digital system for our health sector, e-payments for transactions, even iris recognition for channeling assistance to refugees. These are just a few examples. You at this forum and your peers in the region will create many, many more. My friends, we will solve the problems of our region, but only when we build on its strengths. We cannot be sidetracked by regional turmoil. We need to be our own leaders on this, although we welcome global support. In fact, the violence that threatens so many in our region is part of a global assault on peace, law, democracy, and coexistence. Defeating this demands a comprehensive global approach built with security, diplomacy, development, and moral leadership. Today's challenges are real. But the opportunity and possibilities at this forum are also real. We meet here today in the center of a huge zone of cooperation. The more we use it, the stronger it will grow. You and your peers around the region can lead the way by bringing regional know-how and insights to regional opportunities, by working with international partners who recognize the strategic importance of your success. So I wish you the best of opportunities now and in the days ahead. Thank you very much.